Okay, so we've been doing integration for a while, and we've uh, not been doing too many derivatives lately. And I want to go, uh, first of all, introduce a new concept to you today, which is called average value, which is going to involve integration. And then because they both have the words average in them, people mix these up, I want to review average rate of change at the end of this video, which is related to a derivative. So keep that in mind. Here's our focus. We're going to touch back on this at the end. So average value, very intuitively, is the average of all the y values of a function over a specified interval. So that may or may not mean anything to you. So let's go ahead and do an example. We've chosen a very friendly parabola opening upwards and a reasonable x interval from 1 to 4. So the drawing's not going to be to scale, but we have a rough look at what this thing looks like. And what we're really going to try to do here is average all the y values that occur along the way. Here's the very first y value, it's a 2. The very last y value is a 17. I guess right here, through a little mental math, that y value would be 5. Plug in a 3 to that equation, that y value would be a 10. So we have a y value of 2, 5, 10, and 17. But here's the problem. Those are just the y values with integers. But there's really a y value at 1.5, a y value at 1.1, a y value at 1.01. There's a y value at... 3.56324751 So you understand the implication is we've got an infinite number of y values. How are we going to add up an infinite number of y values and then divide by infinity? Because that's how you take an average. You add up all the data pieces and you divide by how many you had. So that's a problem because we can't add up infinity values, much less divide by infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to use your friend, the integral, to help you with that problem. And here's what the integral will do for you. The integral is a professional adder-upper. So this part right here, that will add up all the y values from 1 to 4 because the integral accumulates these y values. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the add them up. That's the integral. And then we're going to divide by how many. Okay, This is how you used to do averages when you were in sixth grade. Well, we just transfer that to calculus. This is the add them up. And the divide by how many is a little bit different. That's the distance along the x-axis. So the distance along the x-axis was 3 units, so we divide by 3. Add them up. Divide by how many? It's perfectly fine to write it this way. I just tend to end up writing the divide by 3 as a multiply by 1 -third. So you do whatever you want, but then once you add up all the y values and divide by the interval length, you have your average y value of 8, which makes intuitive sense. If our lowest y value was 2 and our highest y value was 17, even though this isn't drawn to scale, you can kind of estimate that if I averaged all those, it would fall somewhere somewhere close to the middle between 2 and 17, but not exactly the middle. So 8 is a pretty reasonable answer. So average value can be a really, really easy concept. Almost always it would be then applied to a, a real-world scenario, but you just know that you add them up and divide by how many. The add them up will be an integral operation. The divide by how many is the distance along the x-axis represented by your limits of integration. All right, so that's average value, and that's a new concept. But because it has the word average in it, you will mix up average value and average rate of change. 
So I'm going to take the same scenario, and we're going to do an average rate of change problem. Let's see. Okay. So the same scenario, just as a reminder, average rate of change, you know a chant for this. It says, average rate of change is slope of secant line. So what I do is just the old slope from pre-algebra, plug in the y values and the x values, and I get a slope of 5. Now those x values and y values, if I can keep both of these on the same page, on the same view screen, here is that secant line that goes through those two points. So I use those two points to do the slope calculation, and I got a slope of 5. That means the secant line has a slope of 5. Or if I wanted to be more precise, if I took the slope at every single y value along that interval and averaged all of those slopes, my average slope would be 5. So the average rate of change, or average slope, is the slope of the secant line. And that is that. Two pretty easy calculus concepts. You want those concepts to show up on calculus questions. That's for sure.